Toby the tram engine works on Thomas's branch line with his lovely coaches and luggage van, Henrietta, Victoria and Elsie. The four friends are inseparable. Their day would start off early in the morning when Toby collects the quarry workers for the quarry. Then, they take the stone to the docks, and from there, they continue their day with the regular passenger service. Early one morning, Toby was at Ellsbridge collecting some workmen for the Inova quarry. As soon as the workmen had boarded, the guard blew the whistle. Right, Toby, off we go, said Henrietta. Unbeknownst to Toby and Henrietta, one of the quarry workers had brought their child with them to work. The kid was curious about Henrietta and began to climb all over her. All of a sudden, he found Henrietta's emergency brake and yanked hard on the cord just as Toby was about to leave. Stop, Toby! Stop! wailed Henrietta. What happened? It's Henrietta's brakes. They're on. <sighs> and I can't release them! Arrangements were made, and pretty soon, Rocky and Dennis came to take Henrietta to the works. Um, Toby? said the boy. I'm sorry for pulling the emergency cable, <laughs> said the sobbing child. The tram engine smiled. That's quite alright, as long as you promise you'll never do it again. The kid agreed, and was soon on his way. Later that day, Toby and Victoria came to speak with Mr. Melvin. I see what you mean, Toby, and I'm sorry to hear about Henrietta. It just so happens, however, that there are some spare coaches you can use. Really? Indeed. Ironically, Thomas is being sent to shunt in the shunting yards at Knapford. This means that Annie and Clarabelle are available for you to use. I think that would be nice, said Victoria. The girls would get a chance to see our line of work, she continued. But Annie and Clarabelle didn't see it that way. Quarry work? Quarry work? This is unfair. How is that unfair, Clarabelle? Questioned Percy. Well, honestly, Percy, look at us. We're made for baggage and passengers. Not dirty work boots and oh, pickaxes. Percy rolled his eyes and decided it best to stay out of the way. Every morning, Toby and his coaches get up and collect the workmen from Tidmouth. Usually, Elsie would travel along the line with Daisy and the milk train, which left Toby to use Daryl, the goods van. When Annie and Clarabelle saw this, they tittered angrily to themselves. This will not do! Quite right, Annie! And why not? Well, for one thing, Daryl is a truck! You wish this pushed me. It means you should be on a goods train and not on this train. Unfortunately, the journey was going to be a tough one. This is an outrage. We can't be seen working in these conditions. This will ruin my upholstery. <laughs> will you be quiet? And now we got a rude tram engine pulling us. Annie and Clarabelle were relieved when they got to the quarry but not for long. I say, Toby, what are we doing? You don't expect us to be pulled along with these... Oh, trucks? Why, well, yes, we do! Oh, we don't think so, protested Annie. And she and Clarabelle locked their brakes on. Come on, Victoria, get them to release their brakes. You're the senior coach of this consist, and it is your job to make sure we run on time. Victoria pondered, and soon convinced Toby's driver to leave the trucks for Percy. Toby was shocked, and the coaches were pleased. That night, Toby went to see Victoria. What was that this morning? He questioned. You just let Annie and Clarabelle off the hook with their attitude. Well, to be honest, Annie and Clarabelle are my friends. I can't say no to them. You can't always be fair to your friends. And as a senior coach, it is your responsibility to let them know that you mean business. I understand, Toby. You can't say no, can you? Is that so obvious? Trust me, Vicky, you're gonna have to say no at some point. The next morning was no different. Annie and Clarabelle were complaining and both Toby and Victoria were getting fed up. Until at last, Victoria snapped. Shut up! You two have been complaining non-stop and both me and Toby are tired of it. I'll put this bluntly to you, she yelled. 
We may be friends, but this attitude is just like daisies and I will not put up with it. For the rest of the journey, I expect silence from both of you. Got it? Annie and Clarabel were speechless and agreed not to talk for the rest of the day. Later in the evening, Toby shunted Victoria beside Annie and Clarabel. Annie, Clarabel, she went on. I wanted to... Uh... We are sorry, cousin Annie. You are right. Our attitude has been rather like Daisy's. We should have been more considerate that you and Toby even allowed us to be on your trains. I mean, if it weren't for you, we'd be stuck in the sheds. Maybe, if you and Henrietta, as well as Toby, would allow it, um, we would love to join you on another run, if that's okay. Victoria couldn't help but smile and happily agreed. So the next day, Toby, Henrietta, Victoria, Annie and Clarabel went for a nice day out without any complaints or talk about quarry work. <laughs>